let me just start off by saying I have no idea how this video is going to go. Pretty much, I'm just going to be winning this, except for a few things that I have planned out, including this. I want to start by talking about the difference between a well-run organization and a poorly run organization. Let's start with the well-run organization and the Baltimore Ravens. Steve Bichardi is one of the best owners in not only the NFL, but all of Major League Sports. Why? Because he does things the right way. He knows how to win, but he respects the people around him, lets them do their job, and in turn, people respect him. And not just the players, the coaches, the front office people, the fans respect him as well. It's that respectability between everybody that allows the Ravens to be successful and really be one of the most well liked organizations out there. And really, in terms of Bashadi, there's only two owners in the NFL that I would have over him. One, the Rooney family. And the Rooney family is just an example of what great owners look like. Ever since R. Rooney created the Steelers, he's done things the right way. Even with the struggles that the Steelers had at the beginning, he's done things the right way, and it's why the Rooney family is one of the most respected owners out there. And really, I think they're the best owners in all the sports. The other, I would put the Moore family ahead of Steve Bichardi, and the reason, it's kind of the same thing with the Rooney family. They've always done things the right way with the Giants. The Giants have had success throughout pretty much every single era of the NFL. Remember, this is one of the NFL's oldest franchises, and they've had a lot of success there. And the Moore family is a big reason why, because they know what needs to be done for the Giants to win. Yeah, they've had some dark times, but what NFL team hasn't had dark times? And again, those are just the only two owners that I would have over Steve Rashardi, who again, I think is one of the best owners in all of Major League Sports. Now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about a poorly run organization. Ever since the Angelos family has bought the Baltimore Orioles, they have basically done nothing. Okay. To be fair, they have been to the AL Championship Series, but having gone to a World Series, they've only made the playoffs eight times in their tenure, I believe, and they had a 17 seasons in a row where they had a losing record. And I remember that fondly because that's when I started watching baseball, right in the middle of those 17 losing seasons. And again, they have had some success. I mean, back-to-back -back ALCSs, 2014 when they went to the championship game again, championship series again, but nothing really that makes you think, oh, they're doing things the right way, because they haven't been. And it's been a combination of so many things that have caused the Angelos family to basically fail the Baltimore Orioles. And this goes beyond the Kevin Brown thing, which I will get to later. But not playing, not paying players that they should have, overpaying for certain players, Chris Davis in particular, firing managers way too quickly, not allowing the baseball guys to do their job, and really not respecting the fans, and not respecting his employees, which again goes back to Kevin Brown, which again, I will get to later. And Dan Snyder's gone. Dan Snyder, you could say, was the worst owner in all of Major League Sports, and he's now gone. Now I think you turn your attention to the Angelos family and what they have done. And, again, it goes beyond that Kevin Brown thing. I mean, this is an ownership family that let Mike Mussina walk in free agency and sign with the New York Yankees of all teams because they thought he was done. He played eight seasons there, and that's why he's not in the Hall of Fame as a Baltimore Oriole, because he had a great career while with the Yankees. His only 21 season came as a Yankee. How sad is that? And again, it, it goes beyond that. Now is where I talk about the Kevin Brown thing. What the heck were they thinking? What the heck was John Angelos thinking with that? I don't understand his thought process there. What Kevin Brown did was what you're supposed to do as a broadcaster and a sports journalist in general. He said nothing negative about the Baltimore Orioles. He just said they had a tough time in, in Tampa Bay the last three years, and this year they're doing great. That's all he did. He took a negative and turned it into a positive. Any other owner, any other sports owner, would have been happy with how he did that. Apparently, Angelos wasn't. And again, I still don't understand why 
he suspended him. It makes no sense. And really, I take personal offense to that. Because as you guys know, I went to college for journalism. Maybe one day I hope to get into broadcasting. I don't know. But he did his job. And you could talk and that graphic, whether he did that graphic or not, they still approved that graphic. That still had to be approved by Masson. So I do not understand at all where Angelos is coming from, no matter what angle you put this at, he's at fault here. He's the bad guy. Angelos is just, it's one of the dumbest decisions I've ever seen in the world of sports. And this is not the first time that the Angelos family has done questionable things with the broadcast team. I know people talk about John Miller, but there was also Gary Thorne and a few others that I can think of off the top of my head. This just does not make any sense. And for this owner to do that, think that he's above all of this when, again, the Angelos family has done nothing since owning the Baltimore Orioles and just sank the team into the ground to where 17 straight losing seasons happened and they became a laughing stock in the MLB. And what makes matters worse is that this is one of the Orioles' best seasons in a long time. They are doing so well, and now John Angelos has put the attention on himself instead of the team where it should be. And stuff like this is where collapses happen. And I sh surely hope that the Orioles do not have a collapse because of the stupidity of the owner. And I don't, and I don't care what Angelos thinks of what I'm saying about him. Because, you know what? He has this coming. I mean, he's being laughed at by other broadcasters from other teams. You see it from the New York Mets and their announcer. He was baffled by this. I'm baffled by this. Because, again, he's just doing his job. Kevin Brown just did his job. And, again, was it negative? Yes, but he used it and turned it into a positive, which, again, anybody would have been okay with that. The fans, the players, the GM, the other owners. I don't know any other owner that would have been upset with that kind of graphic. Even Dan Snyder wouldn't have been upset about that. And I'm saying something positive about Dan Snyder. That's how bad this is. I just do not understand this at all. And again, if this leads to the Orioles collapsing at the end of the season... That's one of the saddest things that we will ever see. And I hope it doesn't. I really hope it doesn't. But then again, in the world of sports, one thing sets people off. And I don't know what more to say about this situation. And that right there is really the difference between the well-run organizations and the poorly run organizations. Have the Ravens had tough seasons? Yes. But Brashadi and the Ravens themselves have been able to acknowledge that and build on that. Meanwhile, it seems like the Orioles just want to forget about their history. Because it just goes beyond that graphic when we're hearing that the broadcast team, people have been getting in trouble for talking about Orioles of the past. What? That makes no sense whatsoever. They just had the 83 reunion. Did they get in trouble for talking to past Oriole players? I don't know. I, I don't know. It's the horrible decisions that the Angelos family has made since purchasing the Orioles. And right now, since Snyder is gone, somebody has to take over that role as the worst owner in all of Major League Sports. And I think the Angelos family just put themselves right at the top. And you know what? If I'm an Oriole fan, which, wait, I am an Oriole fan, so I'm going to say this to all the Oriole fans out there. Don't stop going to the games. Keep supporting the players. Keep supporting the coaches. Heck, keep supporting Mike Ellis. Because it's them that turned this team around. They did this despite the Angelos family, not because of the Angelos family. And really... For John, he's being called out for a lot of things that he said that have just been nothing but lies. The Orioles, 
looking to spend. They haven't done that. Looking to extend the lease on Oreo Park. They haven't done that. That lease is up at the end of the year, and they still haven't come to an agreement. They haven't done that at all. And people are showing up. And signing players to long-term deals. They haven't done that either. And there's a lot of young talent out there that they want to get signed now before it becomes way too expensive. It just baffles me how terrible and just how out of touch this ownership is. And I wish the Orioles had better owners. I wish the players, the coaches, and Mike Ellis, I wish he had a better owner. And I tell you what, I don't know how much longer people are going to be able to tolerate these kind of decisions if, Angelo, if John Angelos keeps doing this kind of stupid thing. I don't know how much longer you're going to be able to tolerate it. And if alone is goddamn Snyder out of there, that's part of the reason that he's gone. And guess what? John, people didn't care about your incompetence before. Because you were one of the worst teams in all of Major League Sports. Heck, you can make a case that for the last years before the resurgence, the Orioles were the worst MLB team of all time. You can make a case for that. But now they're winning, and now there's a target on your back. And if you keep making questionable decisions like this, it's not going to be long before you're forced out of ownership of the Baltimore Orioles. It's not going to be too long. Keep that in mind. To sum up, what has happened? What well, we found out yesterday. That right there is an embarrassment to sports owners. It's an embarrassment to broadcasters and journalism in general. It's an embarrassment to the MLB. And it's an embarrassment to everybody named John. Okay, maybe not that last one. Anyway. I really hope that things are able to work out and that Kevin Brown is able to call games again this year and I hope he's able to land on his feet he's a very talented broadcaster and if the Orioles don't want him well somebody else will that's what was said and that's really all I have to say on this topic anybody that wants to add to this please let me know down in the comments below thank you for watching this video make sure to like comment and subscribe to the channel and as always i will see you guys next time